You better believe they're still on the field at Bryce Williams Stadium enjoying this one past the midnight hour. South Carolina 44, Texas A&M 20. Welcome into the Voice of College Football Instant Analysis on this one from Columbia. Please like the video and subscribe right here at the Voice of College Football. Texas A&M, of course, came into this game as the only team in the SEC unscathed at 5-0 and looking to make another major step toward the SEC championship game. But South Carolina has been a pretty darn pesky football team this season outside of a performance against Ole Miss when they lost by 24. Otherwise, they have given the best teams in the SEC all sorts of heck, and they did in this one. Okay, the storylines coming into this one, besides what we just set up in regards to Texas A&M's quest to win the SEC and to get to the college football playoff, is the quarterback situation at Texas A&M with Connor Wigman, the starter, coming back from injury a few weeks ago, but ineffective through the first half plus into the third quarter against LSU, replaced by Marcel Reed, who supplied that push, that oomph, that spark for Texas A&M in that comeback win against LSU. So who would Mike Elko go with? Of course, he's staying with a hot hand. He went with Marcel Reed, but the hot hand went to Lenora Sellers in South Carolina out of the gate 14 to nothing as they got the ball first, 11 plays, 75 yards for the touchdown. Then curiously, for as much as I think the world of Mike Elko is one of the very best in the business, they got stopped at the 34-yard line. Okay, this is first quarter. You're down 7 to nothing. Hostile environment. You've got a good defense, although they didn't show up tonight. And they went for it on fourth down. They gave up the football right there at the 34, and bam, South Carolina hits them for two plays, 34 yards, and it's 14 nothing, just like that. But Marcel Reed got his game together, 18 of 28 on the night, also factored into the running game as he does. And Texas A&M came back to make this a very entertaining 20-20 to game at the break with seven lead changes, the seventh being Rocket Sanders to the house. 52 yards for the former Arkansas Razorback, who was one of the top backs in the SEC a couple of years ago, but has been suffering with injury issues since. And the South Carolina game run game was just getting revved up for 252 yards just to start the third quarter. They finished with 288. But think about this. The Texas A&M defense, considered one of the best in the SEC, certainly in the front seven, gave up 24 yards on the ground to LSU last week. 24 and 23 carries gave up 288 on this night. This was the turning point of the game. We come out at 20 to 20. Rocket Sanders, 52 yards as the safety Missed on the run fit, and he was gone. And then Texas A&M gets the ball. They're on their own end of the field, 31-yard line. They've got a fourth and inches, so this is the way to play it these days. You go for it. The analytics say go. They get stuffed. Debo Williams stuffs Amari Daniels, just blows up uh, the guard play. And this was a trouble spot for Texas A&M all night. Guard center, guard, not being able to get the push when they needed it in short yardage situations against the Gamecocks. So we're at 27 to 20. Bam, they go for another touchdown, another fourth and one for Texas AM. This time, Mike Elko says, Uncle, not going to try that again. And even though the analytics, even more so stated that Texas A&M needed to go for these short yardage plays uh, because obviously time was running out in the third quarter and they were now down two scores at 30 to 20 after missing up on the um, fourth and inches from their own 31. 14 minutes left to play. Texas A&M driving to cut it, hopefully for them, down to a three-point game. So despite the onslaught from South Carolina, Texas A&M and Marcel Reed in prime position to make it a great four-quarter game. But O'Donnell Fortune, off the deflected pass at the line, picks it off and rambles. Well, no, he's fast. He raced 86 yards for the touchdown to break open this game up. Except, come on back, O'Donnell, you stepped out at the 16-yard line. 
not the other 16. It's your own 16. So big play, huge play to thwart the Texas A&M drive, but still not the uh, backbreaker at this point as the pick six was negated and brought all the way back to the 16-yard line as he stepped out of bounds. Marcel Reed, who took over for Connor Weekman early in the season, second or third game when Weekman went down, played four games, came in against LSU last weekend, played this entire game. That was his first turnover, fumble, or interception in 2024. That's how good Marcel Reed has been, uh, including tonight. This loss, do not pin it on him. Pin the win on the South Carolina defense with three sacks and all sorts of plays behind the line of scrimmage with the likes of uh, Kyle Kennard, who we talked about numerous times throughout the last uh, six or seven weeks, and Dylan Stewart and others up front, as in the second half, the South Carolina pass rush just overwhelmed Reed and then also credit this game to Lenora Sellers. Yes, the South Carolina offensive line came to play and opened the lanes for Rocket Sanders. 7.2 yards per carry, 144 rushing yards, but it was the escapability of Lenoris Sellers over and over and over in the pass game as he threw for 244 and rushed for 106. What a night for Lenoris Sellers of South Carolina just completely the avalanche came rushing down after halftime with a 24 to nothing second half surge as they win 44 to 20. Texas A&M now falls to 5 and 1 in the SEC, 7 and 2. And of course, we all know that 10 and 2 is that almost certain benchmark for the college football playoff. So Texas A&M, it would appear would have to win out and they've got a game against Texas to close it out this season. So this was a huge loss for Texas A&M. South Carolina just playing out the string in regards to just wanting to prove that it belongs in the SEC. And yes, they do. Aside from that one downer against Ole Miss, took LSU to the wire, should have won that game out, played the Bayou Bengals, took Alabama to a two-point game, and South Carolina looks strong at 5-3. and three. And look out, Mizzou and Clemson on the schedule. Comments and questions are welcome as uh, this is a big one in the SEC. South Carolina gets it done over Texas A&M 44-20. Please like and subscribe right here at the Voice of College Football.